Hello, thank you for joining us today on the Profit Scale Thrive podcast, where we guide attorneys to overflowing profits, scaled growth, and thriving lives. I am your host, Kelly Brubaker. We have a secret though. This is a special place because we don't work with every law firm owner. We support the solo attorneys who are also single parents because we know the special challenges you face and we know the business advice out there is not always practical for you and your firm. Each week, we will talk about things that will give you the insight you need to stop feeling overwhelmed, to gain back your confidence, and to finally enjoy your law firm and your life again. Hello, and thanks for joining me today for podcast episode number 12. Welcome back, or for those who don't know me yet, my name is Kelly Brubaker. I am a CPA and a business coach who supports solo attorneys who are single parents. I'm also a certified profit first professional, which means I help my clients implement the cash management system presented in the book Profit First written by Mike Michalowicz. A few weeks ago, starting with episode five of my podcast, I began a dedicated series of episodes to share with you in detail, chapter by chapter, the book Profit First. If you have read the book, please follow along as I will share tips not in the book along the way. If you have not read the book, but you're curious about it, please stick around as we go through chapter by chapter. This week, we're talking about chapter eight, find money within your business. We've done a lot of work so far to understand why Profit First works, how to use it, and how to customize it perfectly for our own business. And we only have a few chapters left to review. There's a lot of doubters when it comes to Profit First, and I love Mike's story about listening to someone else convince a doubter in Mike's presence that Profit First actually does work. So here's the story. Mike was at a roundtable event answering questions about Profit First, and at his table, one person voiced their opinion that Profit First would not work for a struggling business. But another person at the table chimed in, and he said, that he had not heard about Profit First before that day, but in his struggling days, he challenged himself to cut his overhead by a third. You see, his business delivered oil, but in two different ways. The first was to outlet businesses who received a delivery of hundreds of gallons of oil at a time via a tanker truck. And the second way was retail stores that received a delivery of quarts for their store shelves via a box truck. But because of the two drastically different types of trucks needed, the overhead was massive as they needed two of everything to fulfill their orders for each service area. Two trucks, two drivers, two customer service reps, on and on. So this owner challenged himself to come up with a way to cut costs by a third for the same volume of customers. But how? His plan, cut a truck in half literally convert one truck that could deliver gallons of oil like a tanker does that also has storage for quarts of oil like a box truck has while there was a cost to convert the trucks he exceeded his goal and cut overhead by almost half allowing him to ultimately grow his company to a 50 million dollar highly profitable company Did you know that in Idaho, their annual rainfall is only 17 inches, which is 20 inches less than the national average? So you may be wondering yourself, who cares? But then how does Idaho grow and export a massive amount of potatoes each year? The answer is because they tap into their underground water supply. And the same can be said for your business. Wasting time on trying to make it rain in your business will only highlight the inefficiencies of your business, meaning new revenue will not create a corresponding increase to your bottom line. What goes on underground or in the back office of your business can help you find heaps of hidden money. So here's a question. Is it possible to have too much profit Is there a maximum limit to profit? Interesting question, right? The answer. 
a business should always strive to have the maximum profit possible because there will always be competitive pressure working to stifle your profit. When you figure out how to increase your profit, your competition will be close behind, which will force you to find another way to increase your profits. For example, the flat screen TV market. In the early 2000s, when they were first available, they were very expensive and very much considered a luxury item until about 2005, when prices began to drop by 25% annually. By 2010, the prices were so cheap that sellers were practically giving them away. Then manufacturers figured out how to make them easier and faster, which increased their profits temporarily. But as each manufacturer streamlined their production, they were able to drop their prices to capture more of the market, right? But profit's a slippery slope. When profit margins are high, competition's usually high too. The competition will continually squeeze you, so you must continually look to do things better, faster, and cheaper. The nice thing about profit first is that as long as you keep your profit allocation consistent, you will automatically, automatically be forced to find ways to make this happen. Hopefully by now you agree that adding more revenue does not lead to increased profits. More sales can actually make you less profit if you are not efficient. So remember at the beginning of the book, we talked about toothpaste and Parkinson's law. Your supplies or time or to work will expand or contract based on need. In other words, if you have 40 hours or eight hours to complete a project, you will get it done in a given time. Now is the time to put this into practice. So let's work on this. Increase your efficiency, which will result in more profit per sale, then sell more, then go back and begin to improve your efficiency more and then sell more and so on. Over time, your profits are going to skyrocket. And here's an idea to increase your efficiency. Serve the same types of clients with the same or similar problems, which will allow you to consistently fix these problems with less effort and less resources. The efficiency comes from less research time and less time needed to create the items needed to fix the problems. Duplicate your best clients and reduce the variety of things you do for your clients. There's a reason why McDonald's only sells a few things because it's the fewest possible supplies that can be repetitively prepared and serve clients consistently. That's where they get their efficiency. I challenge you to look at every aspect of your business. Determine how to get two times the results with half the effort. Effort being financial cost and time cost. How can you onboard two new clients in the same amount of time that it takes you to onboard one new client today? There will always be reasons to avoid doing something better, but figure this out and you will be the market leader that everyone else is chasing. Innovation occurs in small steps, big leaps, and everywhere in between. When you focus on doing twice as much with half the effort, that, my friend, has a direct impact on your bottom line. Profit First creates a way of life whereby running your business within your allocated OPEX, you are continually forced to find new systems that are more efficient today than yesterday. Here's an out of the box solution that I love. In 2006, UPS discovered that only making right turns in their delivery routes saved them time from sitting in left turn lanes and less idle time waiting to cross traffic, which resulted in a savings of $6 million a year from needing less fuel. And here's another UPS efficiency. Drivers keep their keys on their pinky fingers. This move saves five to 10 seconds per stop times 50 stops per day over their massive number of drivers per day. 
which is another huge savings. My last UPS savings, washing delivery trucks every two days instead of every day. The savings here was in time, energy, and water. So I challenge you again, what can you do to get two times the results with half the effort? So let's chip away at expenses. Cutting expenses does not need to be done all at once and never, ever, ever at the sacrifice of quality to your products or services. You can take it slow, but just get started. So enough about expenses. Let's completely shift gears and talk about clients. Let's talk more about firing bad clients. So The Pumpkin Plan is another book that Mike Michalowicz has written for small business owners. Where Profit First focuses on cash management, The Pumpkin Plan focuses on increasing efficiency and business growth. A great lesson in The Pumpkin Plan is about letting go of clients who suck us dry because in addition to depleting our souls, they are eating up our profit margin. By making room for clients, we can serve exceptionally well by doing what we do best with the fewest resources, we can now grow our top line and our bottom line. Mike shares a study conducted by a Chicago-based growth consulting firm, Strategics. They studied the revenue, cost, and profit breakdown for 1,000 companies. And weirdly, the results were as expected. So let me explain. Strategics sorted the clients of each company into four groups in descending order based on revenue. So the top 25 clients were put in group one, the next top 25% were put into group two, and so on through group four. For the 1000 companies, group one which was the top 25% of their clients, generated 89% of total revenue. While group four, which was the bottom 25%, for all 1,000 companies, generated 1% of revenue. Ouch. But it gets worse. The study concluded that it took the same amount of cost and time to serve each client, regardless of their size, meaning it took the same effort to serve the top clients as the bottom clients. And even worse, the profit analysis concluded that group one, the top 25% clients, generated 150% of total profit. You heard that, 150% of total profit. Groups two and three clients were effectively break even with respect to profit. Group four clients, the bottom 25% of all the 1000 companies generated a 50% loss in profit. This means that the top 25 clients were funding the losses just to keep the bottom 25% of clients around. And I'm sure you've experienced this too. The clients who barely pay peanuts, but constantly complain about how much you charge and you do nothing for them. The clients who demand you rework what you've already done for them before and then still refuse to pay or blatantly drag out paying you forever. These clients are costing you money. You need to get rid of them fast. And it may seem counterintuitive to fire clients, but remember that not all revenue is the same. Firing the bad clients will temporarily lower your revenue for sure, but you are now freeing up the unnecessary costs associated with those clients. This will lead to a jump in profitability and more importantly, a reduction in stress. And these are benefits you will quickly see. And now the flip holds true. Now you will have time to pursue and clone your best clients. So take a chance and weed out one rotten little pumpkin. The one you dread seeing the emails 
in your inbox or seeing their name pop up on your phone's caller ID. The emotional distraction that client has caused you and your staff will immediately disappear. Stop spending your profits from your best clients to carry the dead weight of crappy clients. So let's talk about who your best clients are. Who is the client you always pick up the phone for? You're excited to answer their emails. They pay you what you are worth on time and without question. They trust you, respect you, and follow your instructions. You love this client and they love you. Now imagine this client has an identical twin or even triplet siblings. Wouldn't it be easy to serve those cl additional clients? Wouldn't it keep your bottom line healthy? Now imagine 10 clones or even hundreds. Having clients with similar needs and very similar behaviors offers a few magical profit-making benefits. The first, you will become super efficient because now you serve very few but consistent needs rather than an excessive array of varying needs. Second, you will love working with your clones, which means you will naturally and automatically provide better service because we cater to those we care about. And third, marketing will become automatic. Okay, birds of a feather flock together for real. Your best clients hang out with other business leaders who have the same best client qualities you're looking for. Because you love your client, they love you too, and they will talk to you, talk about you every chance that they get. Clones of your best clients are the very definition of efficiency which is why they are like gold. Find them, nurture them, find out where even more best client clones are hanging out and cultivate them too. So let's talk about selling smarter. Remember in chapter one, Mike told the story about his landscaper, Ernie, who tried to expand his menu of services because he was already at Mike's house, right? Instead of doing his one thing landscaping really well, he tried to be everything to everyone. And in doing so, it required a lot of equipment that he did not own. And additionally, some of these services were new skills that Ernie had to learn, which made him inefficient. So this is your reminder. Do not get caught in the survival trap. Efficiency is the secret sauce of profitability. Getting more of the same things done with better and better results using fewer and fewer resources. Selling without having the efficiency in place is the most difficult way to increase your profit. But applying efficiency strategies to your top line, which is firing bad clients, closing the good ones, refining your offering to get the most out of your resources, and then selling smart, is a surefire way to increase your profitability. And now it's time for our listener's question of the week. And instead of a listener's question today, there's a side note in chapter eight of Profit First that's something I would like to address here. And it's about the Pareto overlap. So the Pareto principle is commonly referred to as the 80-20 rule. Pareto was an Italian economist in the late 1800s who studied the distribution of wealth. He discovered that 20% of the Italian population owned 80% of the land. He looked at his garden and he realized that 20% of the pea pods contained 80% of the peas and on and on and on. Pareto's principle also applies to your clients in that 20% of them yield 80% of your revenue. And even further, 80% of your revenue is derived from 20% of the services you offer. The key to this advanced strategy is to connect the two, your top clients with your top services. While some of your top clients do buy most of your profitable services, 
some of your top clients also buy your lowest margin services. But then the opposite is also true. Your worst clients may be buying your highest profitable services or your lowest margin services. But once you start to see the overlap in your top clients who buy your most profitable services, your decisions will become very easy. Get rid of the bad clients who only want your least profitable services. They're not a good fit and they're not making you money. Again, the bad clients who only want your least profitable services, they're gone. Find a new way to manage the weak clients who do not buy your most profitable services. And let me give you some incentive. Often, what we think are bad clients can become better clients if you meet with them to set new expectations and methods of communication. Be sure to meet with your top clients who don't buy your most profitable services to find out how you can deliver profitable stuff to them too. When you focus on profit first, even when choosing the clients that you are willing to work with, you increase your profit dramatically. Not only do you save money by cutting unnecessary expenses relating to servicing weak clients who don't buy your most profitable services, you also free up your time, energy, and creativity to focus on the clients you love who bring in the profit. Applied to your client base, the Pareto principle is an advanced profit first technique that does double duty. You save money and gain profit, and you've got to love that. If you would like to submit a question for a future episode, please send an email to podcast at profitscalethrive.com. And no, by sending us an email, you will not get added to an email distribution list. There will not be a phone call and there will not be a sales pitch. We follow the golden rule, treat others how you wish to be treated. This week's inspirational quote is from Earl Nightingale. Success is the progressive realization of a worthy goal or ideal. Final thoughts for today. I hope you're enjoying this approach to the book Profit First. Before today, we have been focusing on increasing bottom line profit without a concern about top line revenue. But today, we talked about a couple of different ways to grow your top line revenue. Great tips, buy your bad clients, clone the good ones, and shrink your menu of services. So next week, we're gonna be talking about some advanced profit first techniques. But here's your homework for next week. Step one, for one aspect of your business, one that benefits your best clients, challenge yourself to figure out how to get two times the results for half the effort. Step two, using the strategies we learned about today, identify your weakest clients, fire the weakest links, but don't burn bridges, just politely end the relationships. And I do understand for my attorneys in the crowd, there are some limits here. Do the best you can. You are not dating these clients anymore, but you can still be friends with them. If you have any questions about today's episode, feel free to comment if you're watching on YouTube or send me an email to podcast at profitscalethrive.com. If you know someone who might need to hear this information, please share this episode with them. Or if you're on YouTube, tag them below. Be sure to follow and subscribe to get notifications for future episodes. Did you enjoy this episode? Please consider leaving a review. And before I go, remember, profit is something you intentionally plan for in the beginning. It is not a potential bonus at the end of the year. Thanks and have an amazing day.